Now, here's your host, Bob Baker. Hello, thanks again so much for listening. On this episode, I'm going to be talking about the best way to formulate a marketing and promotion plan. It's something that everyone needs to do. You uh, just can't be doing things randomly. You need to have a roadmap, uh, a blueprint, a set of uh, steps that you know you're going to be taking to get exposure and promote yourself and share your message with the world. But here's the thing, though. Over the years, I've been doing this a long time, and, and I've noticed something over the years that a lot of people who subscribe to my Buzz Factor music e-zine or the full-time author e-zine or people who read my books, attend my workshops, etc., they tell me a really cool thing, that when they're exposed to my ideas or they read my stuff, their mind expands, their wheels start turning, and they shift into this brainstorming mode where they either apply the idea that I'm writing about directly, or it leads them to think about a spin-off idea that they can uh, use to apply to their own particular situation. And that's great, because as an author, um, that's really what my goal is. It's not just to publish books or, you know, hit a, a certain number of sales figures every month. Really, it's to inspire and empower people. And the best way that I can do that is by getting people to think differently about this marketing thing. In fact, that's the greatest compliment you could probably ever pay me is that, Bob, after I read your book or heard you speak or whatever, I think about this marketing thing a lot differently. And hopefully you're doing it a lot better and it's helping you uh, reach more people. So it's great when the promotion ideas come fast and furious. Um, But here's my first piece of advice when it comes to that. There's a couple things I'm going to share with you here, but the first one is find a way to capture those ideas. So when you are in that creative brainstorming mode and the ideas are coming quickly to you, you have to find a way to capture these things. Just don't rely on your memory. Oh, yeah, I'll remember that. That's a good idea because how many times have you done that with a song idea or an idea for an article or a book or whatever? And later you go, now, what was that thing I thought of again? Uh, Oh, well, never mind. So you need to capture your ideas. And whatever way works for you, you know, I've been using computers since the 80s. I've been online since the mid-90s. And so I'm a technically savvy guy, but I still like pen and paper. I like capturing my ideas by writing them down. But if you want to use your you know, iPhone or your laptop or a computer uh, program to do that, that's fine too. But the main thing is to capture them. Uh, but the cool thing that I like about actually writing on a piece of paper is that when you write down your goals or you write down the ideas that you have, it's actually the first step to bring them into the material world. Otherwise, it's just an idea floating around in your head. And what you ultimately want to do is make that a real tangible thing in the real world and actually writing them down where it's on a piece of paper that you can hold in your hands is actually the first step to making that a reality. Whatever method you use, the important thing is you need to capture these ideas and have a record of them in a place where you know you can go and look at them. So if you're driving when inspiration strikes, carefully pull over and scribble down your thoughts on a gas receipt or a fast food bag or whatever is handy. You know, if you're in a bar or a restaurant, use a napkin. I mean, really capture these things in whatever way possible. You know, if you're in a shower, where a lot of people get ideas when they're taking a shower, well, be creative and find a way to record them even there. And then have a central location where you bring all the ideas together. So once you have this master list of earth-shattering, career-boosting concepts, things don't necessarily get any easier. Now you probably feel as if you have so many options, you don't know where to start. And most creative people get so flustered at this point that they they just do nothing. Oh my God, there's so many options. I better sit and think about this for a while. So they do a little bit of, either they do a little bit of everything all at once and spread themselves too thin, or they do nothing at all. (laughs) So either one of those things is not a great option. So you need to take this and craft a a plan. So I believe in keeping things simple. So the main thing is don't overwhelm yourself. Don't try to take on too much at one time. And before you jump into the grand scheme of things, there are two basic things that I think you should be doing every week, if not every day, no matter what else you're working on or whatever grand marketing plans that you have. One, if you're a musician, for instance, you want to write, record, and perform great music. I mean, there's no secret to this. The most creative promotion ideas in the world will do nothing to help mediocre music. So work on your craft constantly. If you're an author, that means write on a regular basis. If you're an artist, paint on a regular basis. Whatever your discipline is, if you're a filmmaker, play with video and edit on a regular basis. So hone your craft. I mean, really all it takes is one killer song or article or a cool video idea um, to light a fire that can actually sustain an entire career. So 
always be working on those things on a regular basis, no matter what else you're doing. The second thing that you should do almost every day, uh, if not every day, is to take steps to connect with and attract more fans. Don't get sidetracked with all the technicalities and industry connections and other stuff that doesn't matter. Keep a constant focus on fans. That's a mantra I've been repeating for many years. You need to connect with the people who support you in order to have a sustained career. Okay, so you have this big master list of ideas that you have for marketing, for getting exposure, for selling your music, selling your books, selling your art, selling your films, whatever. Now, the thing I recommend you do is to get out a calendar that covers the next 12 months, and you start writing down your best ideas and the times of the year that they would work best. Certain things are seasonal, so you place, obviously, if you create things about romance, Valentine's Day is a great holiday to uh, focus some effort around, so you want to plan some things in the month or two leading up to Valentine's Day. Some things are not seasonal, uh, but you there's probably ideas on your list that you're more excited about and you're more eager to get into, so plan those early on or plan those for the coming month or two. But just take your ideas and start categorizing them. Start placing them on a calendar and spread them out throughout the year. Don't make the mistake of loading everything in the first two months and then getting so burnt out that you do nothing the rest of the year. This is a a long-term plan. So think this through. Move things around on the calendar until you've got at least one or two great marketing ideas listed for each month, along with ongoing repetitive things that you do on a regular basis. And doing this will give you a promotional roadmap so you know the best way to spend your time and energy every month, every week. Every day, your efforts will be a lot more focused, but this is not always easy to do. In fact, I developed a course for berkeleymusic.com called Music Marketing 101. It's an online course. And the 12th and final lesson of the class is to create a 12-month, you know, a one-year marketing plan. And for a lot of the students, um, this is the first time they've ever done this. And so a lot of them go, oh my God, this is so hard. But they are always grateful at the end. I get comments every term where they go, thanks for making me do this. I never had to prioritize or think through how I'm going to plan my year uh, marketing. And when you start laying these things out on a monthly calendar, you start to see patterns. You go, oh yeah, well, I've got to do this before I can do that. And to get here, I've got to go through these steps. And so it, it adds clarity to your plan and it helps you take this huge list of great ideas that you have and gives it some structure. So don't just wing it. Don't just leave things to chance. This is your career and your livelihood at stake here. So set priorities. Create this action plan. And you can always tweak it and alter it, the plan, as you go. This is the thing. These plans are not set in stone. They are flexible. um, And you should monitor and measure things along the way and say, well, I wasn't really realistic with this plan. Maybe I'm not so interested in this now. You can tweak it as you go. But having the plan to begin with sets you off in a direction. It puts one foot in front of the other, and through that action is what leads to the results and to the feedback that you need to alter it and make it an even better plan. So the bottom line, formulate a plan, your ideal plan, using this 12-month calendar. Take all those ideas and put some structure to them. So do this soon. While you're thinking about it now, if you're driving or jogging, what the heck, just pull over and sit down and, you know, find something to scribble on. Uh, But formulate this plan and take that long list of ideas and organize them. No matter what your discipline is, uh, your creative genre, I hope this was helpful and I hope that it does uh, inspire you to sit down and uh, plot out your goals for the coming year. I wish you continued success. We'll talk next time. To subscribe and download the latest episodes, go to thebuzzfactor.com. Click on podcast. Go ahead. Do it. You'll be glad you did. <laughs>